Alrighty, hey everyone, it's Garrison, and it's about that time to do a two-year update video on the 2014 BMW 3 Series I've been daily driving. So this is going to be my 14 320i. Did purchase it May 23rd of 2018 with just under 50,000 miles. I think it had probably around 48,000 on it. I've put probably around just under 25,000 on it. I don't have the specific numbers on the top of my head, but she's been an absolute peach. But first and foremost, I just wanna say, this is not gonna be an elaborate video like my nine month update was. As you know, we are under quarantine, so staying out here and secluding myself at the closed pool house. <laughs> but here, let's just do a quick little update video going back to my roots and just doing the basics here with my iPhone. But coming up front, as you can see, we don't have the depot headlights or anything like that. Still do have the base halogens. They're working well. I did have a right headlight malfunction and that's just a burnout bulb. And lucky for me, these are just the halogen bulbs. So went and got me some Sylvania bulbs and threw those in for, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks. Now over on here, you might notice there is a little paint missing right over here. And then if you look a little closer and had a fine tooth comb, you'd see some um, stressing on the paint over here you probably can't see maybe that angle's a little better but we actually did take a little dive into the ditch this car is actually a tank of course at, in typical southerner fashion the first time it snowed here this season um, I panicked hit the brakes too hard when it transitioned from rain to snow and the back end stepped out and I ended up in the ditch so lucky for me I ended up um, parallel with the road and so it was actually I didn't have any damage other than um, missing just this trim the fog light got pushed in and the headlight got a low condensation in it but we put everything back together we were actually able to go back to the crash site the ditch site I guess you could say find the plastic trim pop back in the headlight the fog light rather and then the headlight condensation did go away and so we are back in business I did get a quote it was around seventeen hundred dollars to replace this this side over here and that was for a new headlight new trim new fog light repaint the bumper all that but obviously it doesn't need that right now so we'll just keep that waxed hopefully the clear coat stays on that bumper if not I mean we'll just go and get it repainted no big deal otherwise we're looking good um, still the the normal wear and tear as it is a what is it a six-year-old car now it's a August of 2013 build so almost a seven-year-old car taking a look at my rims and tires of course we do still have those um, 18 inch turbine style wheels that are off the modern line trim. And I am riding on those Centurado P7 All Seasons from Pirelli. They're doing great. I've got about 20,000 miles on those. I did purchase a vehicle needing tires, so it worked out well that I was able to find some rims also. And these rear brakes are new. Got them done for less than $300 actually. I thought I had a stuck rotor because I kept hearing a grinding noise and I was like, what is that? And I finally took it into the shop and they're like, Sir, your um, rotor, is, your brakes are metal on metal. <laughs> I was like, oh, that might be why it was scraping really bad. And so they were like, it's 3.30 on a Saturday. We're going to try and source the parts, but there's no promises. Lucky for me, they sourced the parts. And so we were out of there for less than 300 for rear brakes. I'm about three millimeters from needing front ones. That's going to be close to $700 is what they quoted me. I can probably get it down a little bit if I stick to hometown dealers instead of the Wilmington dealers. Of course, you do have your power folding side mirrors as well as the turns go indicators and my power sliding sunroof, shark fin antenna coming in. I did give it a good wash in detail. As you can see, there was some bugs up front. Um, I got bored the other day during quarantine. Animal Crossing can only keep you occupied, but for so long during the day. And so I had to get outside and wash my car. So I washed, waxed it, came under the inside, gave it a good um, interior cleaning, conditioned the seats for the first time, conditioned the steering wheel, washed the mats, the whole nine yards. But we'll go ahead and start it up. So foot on the brake, button to start. We'll go ahead and pop underneath the hood. Coming underneath the strut assisted hood, this is going to be the N20 2 liter turbocharged i4. It's going to be detuned on the 320 models. So it's going to make around 180 horsepower. A little more torque, I think around 200 pound foot of torque. Going to the rear wheels through a ZF8 speed. Transmission absolutely makes the car. I think this would be an absolute dog of a car. Absolutely slow if it had any worse of a transmission. But even Brooks agreed with me that the transmission was pretty decent. So that's worth something. 
I would love to have a little more power. Of course, I've looked at JB4 tunes and then all that kind of stuff. I just don't want to compromise daily driving and reliability under that kind of stuff or stress the engine any more than it should. So I think I'll just hold off on that for now. If you guys missed the video, I do have a brand new timing chain. I did get the um, about a $4,500 timing chain service. You know, that's about the only weak point on these um, N20s is the timing chain stretches or the guides will snap or anything like that. So I just had it completely redone. Um, under the seven year, 70,000 mile uh, service bulletin, which was nice. And then I did have an engine light around 68,000 miles and that was my mass airflow sensor. So just popped that out and blew it off with some math cleaner, threw in a new engine filter and we were good to go. I still am riding on the original battery. And so I am expecting that to go out any day now. I've got some um, funds set aside for that. That'll be close to $500 since they are gel batteries and you have to get them coated because the um, alternator accommodates for the age of the battery so it's not overloaded, which is interesting. Definitely a German thing. As you can see, coming back in, this is going to be the um, premium package. So it's got premium, a la carte nav, and a la carte heated seats. So I do have the real genuine leather. It is gonna have the power functions with four-way lumbar, two-person memory, as well as the power folding mirrors. And you can tell the real leather models via this stitching right over here. But coming in, we'll take a look at how everything's holding up. As far as the steering wheel, the steering wheel doesn't thrill me. It's the thinner spoked wheel or the thinner wheel. Actually, it's not one of the M Sport wheels or the, the wheel with the chrome trim down here. So I would love to have a wheel. Um, the only tricky part is getting an airbag if you do get a wheel because most of the wheels on eBay don't come with airbags because it's illegal to ship those. Of course, you can get one shipped if you try hard enough, but I don't know, messing with this like crucial safety tech kind of scares me. But you do have the cruise control. I started to get the cruise control malfunction error and that's going to be my one German quirk that I keep. I think I've always heard the superstition that if you fix everything on a German car, it's just going to um, break something else. And so that'll be my one thing that I keep broken. You do have your audio controls, Bluetooth, voice commands, all of that. Uh, of course, your tap to three blinks, blinkers, high beams, um, rain sensing wipers. They are kind of sensitive, but you can code that down in Beamer code, thankfully. And then coming up top, I do have the um, navigation system, which is very nice with the um, touchpad controller. Of course, you can scroll through everything, Bluetooth string audio, um, all of that. It works pretty well. It could use an update. I tried to update it via the USB flash drive. Um, of course, BMW is really good about um, still supporting their previous vehicles. And so with iOS updates, you do get um, iDrive updates as well. Do you have the wood trim as well as the eight presets that are touch sensitive? And you do have the dual zone auto climb and I need a little airflow. Uh, Tri-stage heated seats, so I don't have the cold weather package or I'd have a heated steering wheel and heated rear seats as well, but just the tri-stage front seats will do for me. I know some of the F30s have a sliding tray. I have the actual lid that pulls out. Um, and so that's in the glove box over there. The shifter for that eight speed automatic drive. Of course, reverse, no backup camera, no parking sensors, just my folding mirrors. And so I am reminded every time by my buddies that I do have a BMW and they have cheaped out and don't give me a backup camera, especially my friend with an ML. He's got a 14 base ML and he has a backup camera and I don't. Um, adequate storage in here. As you can see, passenger seats holding up well. I don't really carry that many people in here. Up top, auto dim mirror, auto dim side mirrors as well with garage home link. SOS safety connect, that did not go off when I tumbled down in the ditch. LED vanity lights and map lights. And then I do have my sunroof, everything's working well. No gremlins, thankfully, knock on wood. But yeah, let's check out the rear seat and we'll kind of go through everything. Can't really think of anything else. I mean, this has been a very uneventful ownership. Despite what people may think, these are really solid cars nowadays. BMW has kind of worked out their kinks, I would say, for the most part, as long as you can um, understand that service and maintenance is gonna be a little bit elevated. You can't expect Corolla service cost for a car that's this um, well-made. But coming in, I'll sit behind myself. All the door panel materials are amazing. Please excuse the sun glare, but you do have the padded, we'll, we'll look over here. The padded materials all the way down, even padded down here, felt line storage. It's amazing. Um, the, the attention to detail that the Germans really do is par none, I would say. Coming back here, of course, I have the pockets full of stuff, but plenty of room behind my five foot nine frame. Once you start getting six foot, you might need a little bit more space. But as you can see, you do have your vents. 
your temperature control so you can control the um, independent temperature of these vents and your top vents up there. And then to my right, nice padded armrest with cup holders. And then up top, just LED dome lights. So climbing out. I don't know, everything is um, doing great. It's a great daily driver, I'd say. Now that I have the timing chain issue worked out, there's really nothing that I'm impending um, doom on. Obviously, I hope it doesn't blow up on me, but you can never really expect that to happen. Single outlet chrome tip exhaust is looking a little sooty. We probably need to polish that. And I actually have seen a picture where people have painted that lower trim piece black with plasti dip, and it doesn't look bad. I'll insert that picture in. I did take a screenshot, I think. Still have the Maserati plate frame to drive Brooks crazy and the 320i badging. Um, I actually had a buddy, he had a 328 and he took his badges off and there was etching that you could see the numbers underneath. And so I'm kind of scared to take off my badges for the sake of that happening. Nice LED plate bulbs, which is nice. Um, that's where my nice backup camera would be if I had one. And then coming back here, everything is trimmed really well. This elastic band works great for wine bottles, if um, you ever needed to know. There's a 12 volt over there. Storage underneath there because you don't get a spare tire. And then there's that battery over there that's probably gonna go out any day now. But yeah, no, she's just a workhorse. Never left me stranded unless you put her in a ditch and she can't get out. Maybe next time I'll invest in an X-Drive model. But yeah, no, she's great. Obviously, if you have any ownership questions, do leave them down below. I usually just get it serviced at the BMW dealer. Um, most dealers around here do have like $89.95 service coupons. And so that's honestly about what it would cost you to do it yourself when you account for the oil discard, purchasing, getting the filter. And then of course you have to accommodate for time as well. So I just get it serviced at the, the BMW dealers. They go through it with a fine tooth comb, tell me everything that needs to be done. Like last time they, quoted me about 760 for brakes at BMW of Wilmington, but they're kind of pricey. But yeah, I would love, I guess, future outlook, I would love to have uh, the depot headlights and they do have depot tail lights as well that do look like the LCI post refresh models. But I don't exactly hate these. The, the LCI models do have LED lights and they do have kind of like the swirly lines on them. There's a lot of effort going into that though. And so it's just kind of, do I want to pay the $600 for depot lights and then pay another potential 150, 200 to have them put in because you do have to rip the bumper off? Or am I just fine with these for the next year or two while I've got the vehicle? I don't know. Probably won't be seeing a different vehicle here in the immediate future. I would love to have a Model 3, a Model Y, or any used Model S, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. It'll probably be just me pushing this around and throwing 93 octane in it. But hey, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If I didn't cover anything, definitely remind me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Otherwise, I will see you in my next videos. Bye now. Hope you are staying safe and staying home.